Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into the Hopkinton Hangout Hour. I'm HKM News Director Tom Nappy, and today we are talking some sports. We'll talk some MIAA sports, what's going to happen in the fall with high school sports, and we'll talk some pro sports today as well. So for the next hour, sit back, relax, enjoy some great sports conversation. Joining me is my co-host, Mike Terosian. Mike, how are you? Doing great, Tom. How are we doing today? I'm doing yeah, excellent. You see, I'm ready for some sports right now. Let's go. Absolutely. Love the Let's back. <laughs> and we got Andy Barron with us from MyFM 101.3. Andy, how are you? I'm doing great, Tom. How about yourself? Good to see you. Doing well. Good to see you as well. And uh, we have Jared Keene from the Metro West uh, Daily News. Jared, how are you? I'm good, Tom. How you doing, man? Can't complain. Can't complain. It's good, good to be back on. Absolutely. So um, before we get into uh, the current topics, uh, I want a little insight from uh, you, Jared. Uh, what are some of the things that you've been covering uh, throughout the summer and as of late? You know, I mean, uh, obviously there was uh, some summer baseball. You know, we, uh, we had some Ashland Sevens, and it's good to uh, see them take down the title. Obviously, I wasn't at the game. Um, you know, unfortunately, I couldn't get that one, but you know, it's good to see them uh, finish off the job and, and uh, you know. Um, the summer baseball was just yeah. terrific this year, that's for sure. And yeah, uh, they had a great season too. And, uh, you know, not much obviously since that's wrapped up. Um, obviously just been obviously waiting to hear about, you know, the different things, what's going on and in the fall and everything and kind of what's being moved to what and, you know, that obviously kind of transitions us into probably the first uh, talking point here. It certainly does. Uh, but first, Andy, you, uh, congratulations to you. I understand uh, you're on the MyFM Sports Buzz, doing some sports talk every Saturday. Uh, how's everything going uh, with the Sports Buzz? Everything's going really well, Tom. Uh, it's, been, it's been great working with, uh, with Tim Cowett and also with Craig D'Alessandro. Of course, Matt Romling, uh, wishing him well out in California. Uh, right now, so surfs up for, uh, for for Matt out there. Hope he's uh, <laughs> hope he's doing well out there. I worked with him for 16 years. I'm also working um, covering for Ray Osier next week on my FM in the morning from September 8th through the 11th. So you can hear me uh, from 5:30 to 9 a.m. as well. And we will be at Imperial Cars in Menden this uh, Saturday. The Sports Buzz will be live. Will be myself and John Wilbur uh, will be there. So that should be a nice broadcast. It's going to be a beautiful day. So. Uh, Come on down uh, to the little town of Menden, where if you test drive a car this weekend, gentlemen. <laughs> you, All right, that's good. Can't yeah. do any company promotion. Uh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, all right, so let's get right into it. We'll uh, talk some uh, MIAA to start things off. And as you all know, this year there's going to be four seasons uh, for the MIAA, we have uh, the fall sports season, which uh, as of right now, it's going to be boys and girls soccer, fall gymnastics, boys and girls cross country, field hockey, girls volleyball, swimming and diving, golf and dance. And then we have the winter sports season, which is the pretty standard winter sports season. We'll have uh, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls hockey, wrestling, winter gymnastics, uh, boys and girls indoor track and field, alpine ski, Nordic ski, winter cheer, dance, swim, and dive. And then we have a floating season that was inserted from February 22nd to April 25th. And uh, football, due to the fact that it's really a close proximity sport, they moved it to that floating season, hoping that they won't have to make too many adjustments to the rules and they could still play uh, pretty normally. Uh, they have fall cheer, unified basketball, and many uh, leagues throughout Massachusetts, including the Hockamock and most likely the TVL, will be moving girls volleyball to that floating season as well, as many schools found that there were just way too many rule adjustments to try to play volleyball normally if they kept it in the fall. And then you have your spring season with baseball, softball, boys and girls lacrosse, boys and girls tennis, boys volleyball, uh, boys, girls, and mixed outdoor track and field, rugby, sailing, girls golf, crew, and other sports. Uh, so, guys, uh, it's going to be a four-season sports year. And obviously, it's a little different with uh, football moving to that floating season. And 
uh, most likely girls volleyball in many leagues as well. What's your take on this schedule that was uh, created by the MIAA? I think they did a good job at trying to keep all the sports going with uh, pretty normal rules for the most part. Jared, uh, you could start off. I, you know, I, I think, you know, they did what they had to do. I'm, uh, you know, I think they've, they've handled this pretty well for the most part. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think as much as people want to see football being played in the fall, um, it's probably in the best interest to have it be played kind of in this weird season, even though that's kind of still a weird time, you know, to obviously be playing football. Um, you know, not many people obviously would think of football starting in, in February, but, um, you know, and then you get a sport like vo uh, girls volleyball, obviously, where, um, you know, yeah, just because kind of seemed like there was so many variants in sort of what you would kind of have to do and sort of these different rule changes that um, I think they probably did the right thing in moving that to a later, a later season. Um you know, I know there's obviously been some talk with soccer as well this fall, a lot of, you know, weird kind of rule changes in soccer. That's going to be And we'll be dicey. talking more about that because there are some really yeah. interesting rule changes. <laughs> really, really dicey. Um, but, you know, I just kind of, I just kind of feel like they are, they're doing what they have to do and, you know, well, I'll tell obviously you. everybody wants to get some sports being played, you know, but you also kind of make sure to look out for the safety of, kids, coaches, ADs, everything. So, yeah, I mean, again, for the most part, I, I agree with you, Tom. I think they've handled it, you know, relatively well. Yeah, I think so. Um, as I said, trying to get all these sports in is tough, especially with the guidelines that were released. And I think really the mission is by that fall sports two season, they're hoping that a lot of those guidelines – will be lifted or lessened so they won't have to change rules to these sports. Uh, Andy, uh, what's your take on this uh, MIA schedule? I'd imagine uh, you have pretty similar feelings to uh, towards this, such as Jared and I, that they're just really trying to get everything in here. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Jared made some great points there. Um, you know, look, this is something that we've never had to experience before. And I think we all agree that football was going to was not going to be played this fall. I think we, you know, we were all in agreement with that. Um, you know, looking at this a little bit uh, deeper, um, as you know, I, I did the Milford uh, independent baseball this year um, with my FM. And I can honestly tell you that I was a little surprised that baseball and softball were not moved to the fall because I think it can be played safely. Um, and especially in the spring, you know how bad the weather gets in the spring with, with baseball, there's cancellations galore all the time. Yep. Yep. And, and um, you know, but yeah, I, I agree. Look, they're, they're doing the best they can with it. Obviously we are in unprecedented times right now and nobody really knows. I, I think we're all just kind of playing the waiting game here. You know, athletics aren't supposed to start now till September 18th. It seems like it's an eternity to wait. Because who knows what's going to change by September 18th. You've got towns now that are creeping into the yellow and even into the red. Yep. And, it's, and it's just not good. And, and you know, it's just, it just seems like there's so much going against these districts and these schools to try to make this happen. Because you also got the triple E virus you got to worry about now, too. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. We well, can't fortunately, there hasn't been uh, any reported cases yet around here, at least. Luckily. Yeah, luckily. Because well, nobody can go outside yet. <laughs> that's, that's true <laughs> and mike it's going to be a little uh different for us covering uh sports this year oh absolutely sure. absolutely right now i would be uh just doing the headshots for the volleyball team uh getting their uh pregame videos already and everything but the uh one of the things that it was great mia was quick with the uh information the the information was very clear it was lengthy i mean i still haven't finished reading that whole document uh from last week and one of the nice things is uh, how well informed our athletic directors are on this as well. One of the best notes to take back was on the volleyball season, which you know is one of our favorite, most popular televised uh, uh, games, is the fact that they even tried to move that outdoors to try to get the TVL to do outdoor venues and everything uh, just to make it happen in time for the first, we'll call it the first fall season. And 
the reason, the other reason why they pushed it off in Hopkins uh, in a few other towns is their athletic uh, centers, their field houses, their gyms, they're being used for classrooms and cafeteria space. So you can't have games going on in there because, and you can't have the practices, of course, because they need that space. They need to clean that space. They, they're not going to have the, the logistics involved. They, I mean, the Hopkins school systems hired uh, two extra custodians for every building just to meet up with the COVID situation and cleaning everything. I don't think that it would be possible logistically to use your athletic center all day as classroom and eating space and so forth, and then clean it up, tear it down, play a game, clean it up, set it up again. I, I just think logistically it would have been a nightmare. And putting the uh, volleyball off until fall two, I think was uh, smart. Yeah, I have to agree with you. And I, don't, I can't imagine the custodians would have been thrilled about having to do that as well. Uh, but the rules for girls volleyball, j oh, they just so changed them so much that when you, when you looked at how they had to play, I mean, they took away spikes. They took away pretty much anything that would uh, bring the players close together. There was changes in the rotation. So there was just all kinds of rule changes in volleyball. And it just – Kind of like some would say, I guess, about the new soccer rules look like a different sport, but yeah. I think in yeah. volleyball even more so because they took away a big part of that game, which is spiking. Right, it's almost not even volleyball. It's, you know, it, it's, it's again, like you said, almost a completely different sport. It's, I mean, you know, and having to switch out the ball after every point and, you know, just all the, all the different variants and, and rule changes. Yeah. And no, no one can I mean, shag. Yeah. No one can shag the ball. No ball shaggers. You can't yeah. have line refs. I mean, it's better if you'll have the up ref or the down ref, but now you got a down ref watching so much for net violations, which is right. hard to do. Now you're talking three feet on either side of the net. <laughs> one referee's going to have to watch for a three foot violation. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Just and no. I think, I think it would have been uh, quite difficult, too, for the uh, volleyball coaches to try to transition their team to a game where you can't even spike the ball over the net. Uh, but I, guys, I, guys, I just want to make a point, too. If you're an athlete or a coach right now as well, and you see the, all these rule changes, are you asking yourself, is it even worth it to play? Like, really? Because... It's almost an, they're almost in an impossible task right now, guys. I mean, really, like, it's like, oh, you can't spike the ball or you can't do this or you can't do that. And it's like, you can't, the athletes can't concentrate on the game. The coaches can't concentrate on coaching. It's just, you know, and, and Tom, as you said, the rules like change like every day, what happens today may not be tomorrow, you know, right. and it's just, um, man, I would, I would not want to be a coach or an athlete right now. This is just, this is crazy. I mean, I, really. I, I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, as weird as that is to say, because I fully want athletes to be able to participate in sports and I want sports back, um, you know, obviously, but you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like if you're in a, in an athletes or coaches situation right now, what are you actually doing? You know, I mean, what do you, what are you really thinking? You know, uh, how, you know, how would it feel to be a girls volleyball player and then have, you know, see all these rules where it's like, oh, I can't even spike the ball. You know, I mean, gee, you know, our coach, you know, somebody like Margie Grabmeyer from Hopkinton was, you know, yeah, or any of these coaches. Um, but yeah, it's, it's almost like what, why, yeah, like just why, what, yeah, all right. the questions. I, I mean, I'm sure it's, there's a lot of athletes that just want to get out there, but as you said, Jared, when you change a sport so much, it really has to make you ask that question, is it worth it? And I think a lot of leagues, such as the Hockenbach and the TVL, found that girls' volleyball with these rule changes just isn't worth it. Let's move exactly. this down the road and see if these rules will loosen up at all. Well, well that, they found the same problem, too, back in the day when the boys were playing on the girls' team because they didn't have – the boys usually play in the spring, but there was no boys' leagues. And then – they let the boys play, and all of a sudden, oh, wow, well, these boys are too powerful. All right, now you can't play the front row. All the boys just stop playing. You know, one of my things that I'd like to see them do is uh, maybe something like this here for the girls. You know, <laughs> get them back on the line, <laughs> spike it and block it, you know. <laughs> Come on, I had to use Lambert. He's the best. It, 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 would, it was either it that would or work, Kobe. Right? I, 
Kobe, Bill Lambert is still the most famous with the mask. More oh. famous than Kobe, but. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they would be thrilled about having to wear that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, you see the crazy oh, stuff they have to wear in uh, field hockey and lacrosse for the girls, you know? Right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, it's going to be interesting watching soccer with the new rule changes, which we're going to get into, uh, but also the fact that it's such a running sport and they're going to have to wear the face mask and they're going to have to wear them as of right now in every sport uh, that could change down yeah. the road. If the virus loosens up, we'll have to wait and see with that, obviously, but for sports with running, I mean, I'm no doctor or anything and I don't play one on TV or pretend to be, but <laughs> I certainly uh, am nervous a little bit about having to run so much with that mask over your face. I don't even like it when I'm walking. <laughs> Are you, are you guys concerned about that at all for these athletes? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Definitely. A th even, thousand percent. If, even if you use the cloth ones that give you the least amount of protection, but the most ventilation, I mean, every little bit helps, but it's, it's still going to restrict that person playing. Are you going to be talking substitutes now? Are you going to, you know, where you usually don't have that substituting going on. Is it going to be on the fly? Is it going to be sooner? Are you going to, what else you got to do? I mean, they cut out the timeout see, to make the game faster. They're cutting this, cutting that. Um, it's almost like saying, hey, you know what? Let's call it off for another year and let's let this vaccine or this, as most conspiracy theorists think, the election will get us all back to normal again. Who knows? Well, I mean, you know, I guess the, the one thing is it, it is the choice of every athlete to participate. No one's forced right. to participate. So obviously, uh, there's many athletes, and I think most, that would participate even if they had to wear the mask. And I think you'll see uh, some pretty good uh, participation rates this year because a lot of the kids just want to get out there on the field. And for some of them who are seniors, for the most part, it's their last opportunity to get out on the field and play. So I, I don't think there's a lot of uh, athletes that are going to pass that opportunity up. But we uh, mentioned soccer, so I want to get into some of those rules. And, Mike, to your point about – more breaks in the game and shortening the game and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Soccer has transitioned to quarters this year and there will be more stoppages and there will be some water breaks. Was it, was it the girls always in quarters or was that basketball? I'm trying to remember. That was uh, basketball. 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 Girls basketball, were quarters, yeah. boys were half. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So soccer has traditionally been halves, but this year will be quarters. Gotcha. Yep. And then they'll have that 10 minute halftime break as well due to the fact that in September, you never know, you could get some really hot weather. So yep. wear those masks and running up and down a soccer field could be pretty brutal some days. Uh, but some rules in the game, it is a violation to intentionally head the ball. It will result in an indirect kick, free kick for the opposing team. So no headers. It is, <laughs> it is a violation to place your hands on any part of an opposing team member's body. <laughs> it will result in an indirect kick for the opposing team. So essentially no boxing out. Uh, it is a violation to intentionally make body contact with an opposing team member's body. This includes shoulder to shoulder tackling, backing into them or any other intentional contact. It will result in an indirect free kick for the opposing team. However, a player is allowed to make an unintentional contact with an opposing team member if the player is attempting to make foot to ball contact Whoa. and the result contact with the opposing team member is below the torso fleeting and minor in nature. So this rule is interesting because it pretty much takes out a huge part of the game in which you got players from both teams going for the ball simultaneously and bumping into each other and knocking each other out of the way. It's a pretty common thing in soccer, but there'll be none of that this year. Uh, it is a violation to attempt or slide tackle. So that takes a lot of fun out of it too. Well, That, that takes away the whole <laughs> game. I mean, taking the ball away from somebody running down the field, you slide tackle it, it changes everything. And persistent infringement of any of the above rules will result in a yellow card. I got it. I got it. Real, 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 real simple. Just turn it into PKs. Just right. get out of the field, stand that. there, kick the ball in. Whoever gets the most in in 20 minutes wins. <laughs> that, that would be uh, entertaining at least. But Well, that's all it turned into is penalty kicks. I mean, I'm lucky they can – they say you probably can't touch the ball now. You know, you have to kick it in instead of throwing it. I don't know. Do, do you know what this <laughs> reminds me of? This reminds me of a field hockey type of situation 
where really there's no contact allowed and right. any form of contact with another player, there's a stoppage and they reset. And that's what you're going to see in soccer. So but I guess the, a contact sport, right? It is a very different sport. Field hockey isn't a contact sport, Correct. or at least it wasn't meant to be. Um, but with these very different rules, guys, is this one of the sports that you would play in the fall or would you move this down the road to hope that maybe uh, the rules would be a little more lenient if it took place in that floating season? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go last here because I have some pretty interesting thoughts on this. <laughs> All right, we'll start off. How about well, we start off with Andy for this? Yeah, well, I, I def. I I would move it definitely because I, I again. I mean, these these is, is, you just read through the whole thing. It's it's crazy and so, contact is part of soccer. That that's just that's just the way it is. And here's another thing I'm gonna mention too, Tom, and, and gentlemen. I wouldn't want to be an official right now. You gotta like re, yeah. re, you gotta relearn the whole. I'm an official. Ooh, my, yeah. Good I'm an I, I'm an official myself. I've opted out of the season for cross country and track. I, it's just not going to be worth it because I mean I have some other is, issues with it too. But it's just you really got to start asking yourself like this is just you almost have to relearn the whole sport. And I, I just right now no, it, it just this needs to be moved. I mean I just I, I just don't see how anyone is going to be able. to going to be able to do this it's going to be really really difficult yeah i have to agree i mean it's certainly different you mentioned the officials but how about the coaches having to teach their players sure. yeah exactly. the game totally different in a style that really it isn't even well, traditional style. This, this is this is new rules to interpret you know everything is interpretation look how long baseball's been going on and you still argue calls that have been the rules since it started Right. Now you're going to argue these new rules. Who's really right? I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I, I don't know. Well, you can't argue because now you what? You got to be six feet away from the dump. I mean, how are you going to kick dirt on his cleats and stuff? How are you going? <laughs> you can't have that argument anymore. So I, I just think the interpretation, uh, interpreting these new rules so quickly. I think it needs to have a little more time. And if you're turning a contact sport into a non-contact, move it to the late fall. Move it to February. Do whatever you have to do. Jared, what's your take? I mean, I'm I'm on board with. I mean, as maybe some of you know, I'm I'm a big soccer guy. I love the game. Um, you know, I uh, I love covering it. Uh, I watch a lot of it on TV. Um, uh, I mean, this is just ridiculous. That's the best way I can describe it. And I, and I'm on board with everything that a lot of you guys have said. I think it's um, it has to be moved. I think if it is, and if it if it does for some reason end up being played this fall, I think that would be the most insane, one of the most insane decisions ever. Um, just based on the fact that again, it's it's something we've talked about before, and it's this is a completely different game. You know, if you can't intentionally hit the ball, you can't intentionally make body contact. I mean, again, on a on a corner kick, everybody's making body contact with each other, shouldering for the ball. You know, trying to win a header, everything. Like this, I mean. That's just insane. This it's again, it's a completely different sport. I agree with what you said, Tom, about uh, coaches in terms of having to try to teach their athletes now how to play again a sport that's pretty much not soccer. You know, what I mean, right. you're taking away you're taking away so many massive aspects of a game. It's like why why even try to attempt to do that? That's not soccer. You're trying to teach them a different sport. Right. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is. <laughs> you, you are not but happy I'm... about it. I know you're a big soccer guy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, give me, give me a break, man. Come on. This, this is not soccer. If you can't, you know, no slide tackling either. No. Oh. You know, some slide tackles can be pretty ugly, but it's, again, it's part of the game. You know, you want to try to win the ball back in midfield or something or stop somebody from trying to get a scoring chance and, you know, defensively or whatever. Like, yeah, that's, right. that's part of soccer. And, and I do want to mention, if anyone out there is watching and they want to chime in, you can uh, leave a comment or a question on our YouTube or Facebook page on the live stream, or you can email us at studio at hcam.tv. We'd certainly love to hear your takes out there on what you think about this MIA plan uh, heading into the 2020-2021 school year with all these changes. Uh, but yeah, Jared, to your point, it, it is like a different sport. And really... You know, I wonder if this is something that maybe you should have asked the players about. 
Like, would you prefer to play in the fall with these rules or do you want to play in that floating season with maybe more normal rules? Obviously you don't know what the situation will be in the winter and in February, it could be the same. It could be worse. Who knows? Uh, But you know, maybe that is something that you should have got some players uh, input on, but it does seem like they are going to go ahead with it. They're going to play with these rules and, I think most leagues are still planning to have soccer uh, this fall from at least what I'm hearing, but I'm sure there's uh, a lot of players and coaches that aren't too happy about it. I'm with you. I'm hoping too that uh, (laughs) I'm hoping that all these leagues will treat this like uh, the baseball steroids era and start putting asterisk on all the stats and all the, all the standings because I mean, I can't see how you can count this thing. Right. Uh, I well, yeah, it. I mean, I think there certainly will be. And obviously this year there's no state tournaments or any of that stuff. So really it's just a regular season and that's pretty much it. Leagues might do their own thing within their league for playoffs, but there's really no statewide postseason this no. year. So no. any way you look at it, I guess there will kind of be an asterisk on it. I think, you know, and what Rich Cormier, the Hopkinton athletic director, said last Friday when I talked to him, the point of this is to get – kids out there that want to play sports. Obviously there's going to be, and this is an indirect quote, but obviously there's going to be sports with um, changes, but the main goal is to get kids out there is essentially his point. And that point I agree with. And Hey, I guess with these rules, obviously it's a huge change from the traditional soccer we're used to, but I guess if you can get the participation and still play the games, then why not? I, you know, why not go for it? And, you know, part of me, I definitely would favor them moving it to that floating season to see if they could loosen up the rules. But obviously in the floating season, there could be other issues such as having fields available with the cold weather and perhaps snow on the ground in February, because some February is very cold and we don't know what this winter is going to bring. We never do in New England. Uh, So I guess there is positives and negatives to, both ways of it, but I'll be very interested to see if they get those participation numbers uh, with all these changes in the rules. So um, obviously we got football in February, which is going to be a huge change for all of us. You know, it is not cheap to plow fields. It is something I've thought a lot about. I don't know if you guys have thought about it at all, but if there's a lot of snow, how are they going to be able to play these games, especially at some of the schools with smaller fields? Uh, I just think it's really going to be weather dependent. And I think the number of games is definitely going to be cut down. I heard teams are only going to have seven or eight games this year, but I think there's going to be a lot of obstacles with having football in the winter. And I'm glad they're still going to try to have football uh, this winter, but I don't know about you guys. Are you worried about the field situations at that time of year? 100%. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Go for it, Andy. Go yeah, for thank it. You, thank you, Jared. 100%, Tom, and, and, and guys, absolutely. What if there's two to three feet of snow on the ground? How, how are you going to be able to play these games? There's not enough also neutral sites uh, places around here. Not everybody can go play at Gillette Stadium or at Boston College, for an example. Now, if there's no snow, it probably would work. But why don't you just start it at, like at the end of March? Now, I know the weather isn't great, But I think there shouldn't, there probably won't be any snow on the ground, hopefully. And you have to play seven or eight games going forward. I just think February, man, that is a tough, tough month. I mean, yeah. I think if they could do it in the 80s, they could do it now, just like this. Oh, there we go. Right? I like that. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Nice. Well done, Mike. Thank you. All yeah. right, we did get some uh, questions and comments sent in. So, I Jared, wanna... that's the only reason Tom keeps me around for these shows. Is... <laughs> that's right, just to pull up those pictures there. And for your backgrounds. And there for my go. background, thanks. <laughs> uh, so some of the comments, uh, the Ashland Sevens could beat the Red Sox this year. I agree with that. I, think I do could. agree with that. I very well, much agree with that. <laughs> I, I think... you send, send Dom Cavan out of the hill, boom. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Or Tyler Dossis, you know, Mr. Or Tyler Dossis, exactly. Hey, the Astros Sevens could beat the Bruins, okay? Come on. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, what are the new rule changes when it comes to high school boys and girls soccer? All right. So I don't know if the person uh, that asked that commented that or asked that question saw it earlier. We'll run through them again for you. Um, so we talked about this earlier in the show. Certainly go back and uh, watch it to hear our excellent commentary. But some of the uh, rules in boys and girls soccer is it's a violation to intentionally head the ball. It will result in an indirect free kick, so no headers. It is a violation to place your hands on any part of an opposing team member's body. It will result in an indirect free kick. So don't touch anybody on the opposing team. Uh, it is a violation to intentionally make body contact with an opposing team member's body. So if you're both simultaneously going to the ball and you end up shoulder to shoulder or falling over each other, there's going to be a free kick. Uh, it's a violation to attempt or uh, to attempt to or slide tackle. Uh, so don't slide tackle or there's going to be an indirect free kick. And if there's persistent infringement on any of these rules, it will result in a yellow card. And obviously after that would be a red card. So there are the rules for soccer. Certainly a lot of changes from the typical soccer we're used to. And then another comment was, are the high school boys and girls soccer games going to be open to the public? So what I've heard about that is, I think in most cases, yes, but I believe it's up to the school. So I think the MIAA is pretty much leaving that decision in the school's hands, unless any of you guys have heard differently, but that, that's what I've heard. And uh, as of right now, and at Hopkinton, there's no guidelines as far as crowds. So I guess my answer for now is yes, but unless you guys have heard differently. I've not heard differently. Nope. No, I haven't either. Hey, Tom, but, uh, uh, J James on Facebook wants to know if, if high school soccer was moved further in the year, what month should it be played in? Well, I think, think, yeah. I think they could play it in that floating season or the spring. That's really their only options. Um, but the spring, obviously, you have conflicts with a lot of other sports and soccer players. I mean, play. spring spring season is usually the busiest season as well that's when there's the most sports you know right. but uh to what andy was saying earlier kind of about you know and i agree with andy by the way about you know the fields you know worrying about fields in terms of the fact that in february there could be two to three feet of snow on the ground in some places like you know right. i mean to play a sport try to play a sport like soccer or football or anything really that requires fields that's going to be tough um but again i think soccer you know soccer can be played in cold weather but obviously you can't play a game when there's a foot of snow outside um, you know, and again, like, you know, like you said, Tom, it's doesn't, it's not exactly cheap to try to plow a field. Well, right. it's, not, um, it's not even that it's cheap too, but you're not a lot of these warranties that they put on these new fields. You're not allowed to take snowblowers on it. Right. So yeah, there you have that. That's issue. a great point. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a huge, that's a really good point, could, Mike. Because it's easy to, during the storm, to clear the snow or even just after between um, a front end loader. And I'm talking the farm tractor styles, not the big, uh, heavy construction, but that with um, with uh, the big brooms and blowers, you can maintain a field. However, it voids the warranties, and but I mean it can be done. So when the warranties are over, they should start considering it, or let's start using let's let's do like hockey did. All right, here's the four schools you can play at because they got the best fields and all the conditions, you know, so you don't play at home anymore. That might be, and that's. That's a good point because they actually had that problem with uh, state semifinal football games a couple of years ago. They were supposed to play at um, a field. It's a field in Worcester. A Foley Stadium? That's it. Yeah, Foley Stadium. They supposed to play at Foley yep. Stadium, but Foley Stadium, they had a plow restriction on that field. Right. They wouldn't allow plowing mm -hmm. uh, at that time of year. So last minute, they had to move the game to WPI, and it was kind of a mess because they did it literally – the day before and didn't have time to plan any concessions or anything like that. And it was pretty disorganized effort, but they ended up having to pay. I want to say it was about 3000 bucks to have the field plowed off. So uh, yeah, this could be even more of a problem uh, in that winter sports season. And I think it's something you really have to consider. Yep. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. With you. So we shall see what will happen, um, but I think uh, we were all under the agreement that as far as soccer goes, I think uh, 
they should have probably moved it and try to see if the rules could loosen up. I think that was our overall consensus. I should, uh, I, have a, I have a question for the three of you guys. I'm, I'm just curious. Again, based on sort of weather and what could be, what sports do you guys think could actually be played during that floating season? Like where you wouldn't really have a problem playing it, knowing that maybe a lot of it is going to, you know, could be outside or something. You know, this floating season is kind of weird because, again, it's kind of a weird couple of months between February and April where you could run into snow or rain issues or, you know, anything really. Um, What sports do you guys think could actually be played during this sort of weird second floating season? Obviously any indoor sport for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But as far as outdoor sports, I would say, I guess football is probably the best uh, outdoor sport for that time of year since the games are only once a week. And the practice fields, I think you could manage, but you don't have to worry about two or three games a week. So that's why I would say, I guess if you're looking at outdoor sports, football is the best for that. Soccer could be very difficult for that time of year. If, you know, soccer, if you wanted to move that, I would probably consider the spring season for soccer. Um, Cause this is a 50, 50 shot that you're going to have a ton of snow on the ground at that time. But I guess if I'm picking, I would say yeah. really is it's football. The other sports is just too many games during the week. I think to risk it. How about, um, I don't know if this would make any sense, but how about tennis? You could play tennis indoors if, if the facilities were available. That is a sport that possibly could do that. I, I don't know if many in the Metro West area have that, but it could be an option. I, I still think, you know, skiing, that, I know alpine skiing, Nordic skiing can be done, um, especially if, you know, with the snow and whatnot. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, not, not a lot of these sports in the spring probably would be able to go indoors, you know, and I, I think it's just going to be – Boy, I tell you, the winter's going to be so tough. I mean, oh yeah. Well, that's the oh, thing. Yes. If if we if we have the true New England winter, which starts what snowing in October, and then goes all the way till January, then we don't see anything for February, March. Yeah, then we're we're fine. But you know, it could happen. You could get the early, go all the way to the late. I just feel that you know, I, I'd like to see field hockey move. You know, I'd like to see that move just to help free things up. But I would also rather see the seasons stay the same, let the restrictions work their way out, because as these chats still change, I mean, Hopkins just went from a gray to a green. Framingham goes from a yellow to a red. What happens is that comes out this way, then everything stops. And right. we said at the very beginning of the show, you still got Triple E and West Nile to deal with. Unfortunately, they're not big yet. They're not uh, as big as they were last year. But I think the the worst months for Triple E of last year was September, actually. Yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because and and Milford's in the yellow right now. We're getting inching close to that red. I mean, you just you just don't know right now, guys. Everything is just a day by day thing, really. Well, and, and that'll be interesting in the case of the Hockamock because. Yep. I don't, from what I've heard in the TVL, if a town goes to red, that team's really not going to be able to play sports. They can't play. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Tom, uh, I, I, I don't know if you know this, Tom, as well, and I know this probably doesn't affect you too much, but I think Tri-County, you know, the other high school in Franklin, um, postponed all fall sports today to that second fall season. Wow. Wow. They're going to have no fall sports. So we're, you're already seeing it. Schools moving things around differently from what – the majority of the state is planning on doing and I'd, I'd have to imagine if tri County's playing any sports in that spring season there must be other schools doing that too because they need somebody to play right uh, so I think you'll see a lot of that you'll probably see a lot of variation in who's playing what it's kind of like college football where you have I don't know about maybe a quarter or a third of college football playing in the normal months and then you got a third of them playing in the spring or, or in the winter. And you got, then you have a third of them not playing at all. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of confusion around. That's for yeah. sure. A, we, bunch of, a bunch of college players just opted out. I think like 30 players opted out yesterday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That kid from LSU, the, the yep. wide receiver, opted out, Jamar Chase. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's supposed to be a top five pick. 
you know, so, yeah. Well, and that's interesting, too, uh, going to college sports now, I guess. You, you see a lot of college players that want to play, that their school's not playing. There's even lawsuits, I believe, against it was the, the Big Ten or, or something like that. There was a lawsuit, I think it was from the University of Nebraska, because that – league decided to cancel the season so you got a humongous amount of players that want to play and then you have some that are scared to play and want to opt out should you leave it up to the players kind of like the nfl did uh or you know the nhl or nba name a pro sport should you leave it up to the players you could play or opt out it's your choice you keep your scholarship no matter what should you leave it should you go for it and i guess this is a college question uh, what do you guys think college should do? Should they just go for it and leave it up to the players? And if they want to play, great. If they don't? Well, the issue with that, in my opinion, Tom, is, okay, so what if play, if they decide to play and then they get sick? Now they turn around and they sue the school. Well, we told you so. Well, there's got to be a yeah. liability for them. Yeah, well, ex- it, well, exactly. But, you know, it's a difficult question because you're already seeing, too, um, Look at in Alabama, there was like, what, seven, 800 cases in like two weeks letting kids back on campus. I mean, in a normal year, the flu bug, you know, spreads through these dorms like that. Now you've got a global yeah. pandemic going on. I mean, my goodness. They're, they're sh- but now they're saying they don't want the kids to go home. It's just safer just to keep them at school because now you're br- – it's like nobody knows what to do, really. <laughs> well, well, nobody you're, knows you're what to new. do. You're it's completely right, Andy, but, I mean, Yeah. Again, you get some of these big schools, you know, uh, Alabama, uh, Notre Dame, TCU, you know, UNC Chapel Hill, all schools, which I know have been, you know, had, had hundreds of cases reported recently. Yeah. It's like, what do, you, what do you do, honestly? Like, what are you actually going to do? You know, do you, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's way, that's so dicey. And, uh, yeah. you know, just in terms of, you know, again, like, it's probably not safe having the kids around. I mean, especially if they're going to want to, you know, hang out and party and stuff and do whatever. I mean, I heard, uh, you know, 20 kids from Holy Cross contracted it because yes. they went to a stupid off-campus party and all were not wearing masks and, you know, doing their thing or whatever. There's no such as distancing at a college party. So <laughs> exactly. Whether you're with a mask or not, there is no way. <laughs> but just, just ask yourself this question, guys. If you're like a freshman or anybody going in and you literally have to stay in your dorm all day, I mean, that's not even worth it. I mean, no. at this point, look at community colleges. They are going through the roof right now with yes. admissions. Yeah, it is right. crazy because yep. they're like, well, I might as well just go there because – and yeah, you wow. can commute yeah. to a lot of yeah. those places too. Exactly. Yeah, be, yeah. Be home, yeah. let mom and dad do your laundry and feed you and everything. And not bad. Why not? Yeah. You <laughs> gave you gave the same kind of education. It's all done at home on the computer. Right. Why not? You know, Tom, one- Tom, last Tom, last thing I want to say on the high school sports topic, and then maybe we should move into some pro stuff, but and this might sound really cliche in some ways, but one thing you kind of mentioned earlier that kind of stood out to me was what Rich Rich Cormier, the Hopkinton AD, said about, you know, just kind of wanting to get kids back out on the field. Um, I'm very, like, torn, I think, on everything because, I, again, I really want sports to come back. Um, you know, I, I've missed being able to cover a lot of stuff, and, you know, I like getting out in the field and, and covering things. I mean, that's, you know, that's what I do. Um right. You know, and, and I think the kids probably want to get out there, but it's a situation I think as well where I also, I think, want to see sports being played where you don't have to make six rule changes, you know, to, to try to get this in. You know, with, with sports being played, you want sports to be able to be played under their normal rule or normal rules or whatever. Right. You, know, you don't want to have to play soccer where you can't head the ball or, you know, or, or anything like that. Um, but again, it's like, where do you try to fit all these, you know, if you try to move all these to that weird, you know, hybrid season, it's like, you know, okay, can you actually play some of these sports? Or if you try to move them to the spring, now you're looking at even more sports in the spring when there's already a ton of sports in the spring. You know, I just, I, I, it's so, there's such a weird fine line here, I think, because of, again, the fact that, um, you know, you want to watch out for the safety of the kids, but I think you also just want to be able to play sports under normal circumstances. You know, and one thing that became more and more interesting to me over time, the, this theory or this idea of switching football and baseball, move football to the spring, baseball to the 
fall because baseball is an approved sport. Right. But and like Andy, I, like no, go for it. Sorry, go for uh, it. Now. I was just gonna say, I think that would have been a great solution because yep. you kind of get similar weather for both sports. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, and you I, don't. Again, and, I, no, sorry, Andy, go for it. No, and you don't have to worry about uh, with lights. You can just play the games at three o'clock in the afternoon. You're done in a couple hours. Yep. You can get home. You know. But um. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens, you know. Uh, but I have to agree, Jared. I, I think, yes, you want to see the kids get out there. You want to see the sports be played. Uh, but you don't want to see all these rule changes. And I think one of the things that needs to be realized, in my opinion at least, and obviously there will be some that disagree with this, is that there's going to be some kind of contact in most sports one way or the other. Yep. I mean, you look at baseball, for example. You got a guy sliding into second base – maybe sliding right into the shortstop. Those guys are close together. There's contact. And as long as the players are wearing masks and there's sanitary, uh, there's good sanitization of equipment and all that stuff, I really wouldn't fear too much watching soccer be played normal. I know there's contact. I know there's some body-body contact. But maybe the players have to wear gloves. Maybe they have to have a bottle of hand sanitizer. Yeah, the kid uses their hands anyway, so glove them up. Right. Exactly. That's true. Very good point. But, uh, but I, I just really don't see why they had to make all these rule changes for soccer. I just don't see the risk in it. And I'm no doctor, but go ahead. He just, Mike. He just plays one on TV. But I tell you, I think uh, one of the big things, and we're gonna, I think this is going to move into the major league sports a little bit yeah. here is the fact that keeping the parents away helps. Let the kids just play. I mean, of course, you know, I'm not going to talk about the helicopter parents and all that stuff, but, you know, keep them away and let the uh, kids, if, if it's all about the kids getting out of the field or whatever, you know, just have the empty stands, <laughs> that, you know? I mean, I wish the fans were that nice at some of these uh, kids' games, but they're not. Right. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, just keep, keep them away. Like and Tom and I saw when we were covering uh, baseball for the uh, senior Ruth. Here we are standing all by ourselves. He's put an extra cable on his mic so he can be further away from me running the camera. And then all of a sudden these parents start coming around. And they're all over us. They're all around us because they can't sit behind the bleach on uh, the bleachers. They can't sit and play. So they all come around us. It's like, uh, guys, you know, really? And I, the parents are uh, one of the big part of the problems, or the fans. Right. Well, and you know, it's especially at Hopkinson, you get that big area in the outfield. Go sit there. Big yeah, outfield. that was great. They were up on the hill, up right. on Field Three's hill. You know, let them go there. All right, but I do want to move into pro right. sports a little bit. Obviously, you know, there's so much to cover with uh, high school sports, and we got into college sports a little bit that I felt that was really important. Uh, but there are a number of happenings in pro sports, and most of them around here besides the Celtics are depressing, but we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, the Bruins, they are done. They lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in game five. They lost 4-1 to in the series. Um, so obviously the big story with the Bruins was Tuka Rask mm. leaving the team. I think it was game three into the series he left. Um, so from what I've heard, he had some uh, family member who was sick. So I'm excusing Tuka Rask. I criticized him at first, but now that I'm starting to hear there was a legit reason I'm excusing him. But I was pretty mad when I heard he was out there yeah. on the golf course. I. I know there's a reason. Oh, yeah, you can't go golf and you just quit a sport. Now you can't golf. I think that, yeah, obviously there was a reason. And obviously we found out that you just can't replace Tuka Rask. That's something right. we found that out. Um, and well, I you, feel good. Yeah, well, I, well, you could, just not with Halak. No. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I think I'd rather just see. And there's another season I was so excited for, the nice short season, uh, a rapid playoff thing. But then – then, of course, they all did it. Everything went political, right? We're dealing with COVID. We can't go to the games. We can't sit at a bar and watch a game. You know, you can't do anything. And yet now they want to shoot off their politics and causing games to be canceled, you know, doing this here. Every, you know, the Bruins didn't need that extra day off. I think that hurt. And 
I'm sick of seeing their politics. And I, I don't even care to want to watch a game anymore, well, no matter what the sport is. I don't care about the politics. You guys want to play. You don't have fans there. You want to be on TV so you get your paychecks and your teams make their money in the networks. But we don't care about your politics. Right, exactly. I mean, I'm a sports fan. I'm tuning in to watch sports, not politics. If I want to watch politics, I'll tune into the news. But people are tuning in to watch sports. So that was unfortunate to see. But uh, I guess uh, getting back to the topic at hand here, uh, what are your thoughts on the Bruins, guys? Do you want Rask back next season? And um, what do you think the Bruins are going to need uh, for the future? Uh, Jared, we'll start off with you. Um. Do I want Tuca back next season? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it'd be nice to have him back. Obviously, uh, he can get the job done, whereas Halak, you know, as, as times where Halak might have played well, he also let in a ton of soft goals. Um, I think you know, he, Halak's a good backup goalie, but he doesn't seem like a full-time starter no, to me. No. No, I agree. Um, in terms of what they need going forward – you know, um, they're just going to need to kind of keep producing fi some, some firepower. You know, obviously, Chara is probably done. Um, you know, thankfully, obviously, they do have some still good young defensemen. Who knows what's going to happen with Krug? I hope Krug stays. Um, but obviously, McAvoy has really developed, and he showed that a lot during the playoffs. He looked, you know, fantastic on the ice. Um, when it comes down to it, though, honestly, and this is going to sound really stupid and probably really simple, but Tampa was the better team. Yeah, they were. Know, yeah, Tampa was they were. honestly the better team. <laughs> I mean, of they were. We only had like, a fighting chance with a little bit with Rask in there, but yeah, they were definitely better. I feel like the Bruins needed some speed for that series. They just didn't have enough speed. No. They were getting Tampa, Tampa was even without ice. Stamkos. Tampa didn't even have their best player and still housed us. Right. You know? I think the other issue, too, guys, it was game two. This was the opportunity the Bruins had to put a stranglehold on this series, and they let it slip away, and it yeah. was all downhill after game two. Agreed. Yeah. That, that was the series. Was yeah. That was the series. They never yeah. recovered from it. Yeah, yeah, that overtime loss really hurt them in game three. Uh, but hopefully, you know, it doesn't look like Char is going to be back. I'll certainly miss watching him play. He was one of my favorite players. But uh, I think the Bruins, they need to get a, maybe a little younger next season. They need some speed, I think, is going to be important to yep. keep up mm -hmm. with – a fast team like Tampa Bay. Definitely. Uh, but also on a positive note, we got the Celtics up two to nothing on the Raptors in that series. They got a nice win last night, uh, 102 to 99 over Toronto. And they're doing this without Gordon Hayward. I think the Celtics are playing very well. I think this team is very talented. Hopefully we have Hayward back, but I could definitely see this team going to the championship. How far do you guys think this team could go? I think they can too, but I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to say this. I don't think Gordon Hayward fits in on this team. I, I just, there's something about him. I don't like, like, now listen, the injury that he had was awful. That was horrible. I felt so bad for the guy, but I just don't think he, I don't think he's got the gravitas to play here. I don't know. This is Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum's team. Jason Tatum is unstoppable right now. He looks absolutely fantastic. Kemba Walker's playing well along with Jalen Brown. And how about Robert Williams? He's been a nice piece off the bench for the Celtics team. I, I, I just don't, I just don't think Gordon Haywood fits in here. I think they're better without him, to be honest with you. And there's the uh, stats from the, from last night's game. And to your point, yeah, Jason Tatum, he's been tremendous. Marcus Smart had a great game yesterday. Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, and uh, Robert Williams the third stepping in with uh, 11 points. But when you look at those four, Tatum, Smart, Walker, Brown, that is an unbelievable force to have right there. Uh, this is a talented starting five on the Celtics. Oh, yeah. And they have real potential. Uh, Mike, you have any Celtics thoughts? Well, I, I could uh, sort of agree with uh, Andy. And Andy, I think uh, Gordon heard you. You know, he's just not looking too good. Look how sad he is. Oh, jeez. In your comment, Ben. No, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I don't have anything additional to add. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jared, how far do you think this team could go? I, I think they could go all the way if they want to. I think they can make it to the championship. I don't know if they can win a title. Um, 
I just don't want to see LeBron. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to admit that I didn't really have a lot of positive thoughts about this team heading into this series. Um, obviously, they've proven me wrong being up 2-0 in the series, and including coming down from, what, 12 down yesterday late in the third quarter when Marcus Smart decided to go, you know, off and hit five threes in a row and uh, just went berserk. Um, I mean, that guy's fun to watch, man, but – yeah. Um, one thing I'll say is actually I disagree with Mike and Andy, and I do think Gordon Hayward actually fits into this team. Um, may have taken a while, um, and obviously he had the injury and everything, but when you saw the way Hayward was playing with this team um, before he kind of went down with this recent ankle injury, um, you know, I, I think, you know, he, he can score the ball. He, uh, he passes the ball. Um, he can rebound. He's a very well-rounded player, and he's uh, he's unselfish. Right. You know, I think he also uh, can do things defensively, um, can match up with certain people. And um, when you add a guy like that to an already dangerous team that has Tatum and Brown and Kemba, you know, three guys, and, and Marcus Smart, even if you want to add him there, that are already, um, you know, clearly Celtics-type players, if that's what you want to put it, Um you know, I, I think he just makes them that much more dynamic and much more tough to beat uh, yeah, I, because, again, of all the things he could do. And, I, you know, I do see him as a, as a Celtics type of player that can have success with this team going forward. And I'll go with you, Jared. I like Hayward. I like watching him out there. And I, I, think he's, I think he is great on this team. I don't think they need him to go to the finals. But would they need him to win a championship? They might. I agree. Because I do think he gives this uh, line of a boost for sure. Uh, I absolutely but, agree. But I love how much talent is on this team. And I think for the next couple of years, they're only going to get better. They got, they got a great foursome in that lineup right now. And uh, they're exciting to watch. But we got a couple of minutes. So let's get into some football real quick. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we got less than two weeks to the NFL season. And uh, Cam Newton getting rave reviews from Bill Belichick. And it seems like uh, Mr. Belichick is liking what he's seeing out of Newton. And I think we all know that Cam Newton has tremendous ability if he's fully healthy and can be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's done it in years past. Obviously, he's battled the injury bug the last couple of seasons. But if he's ready to go, I'm pretty excited about what he could bring. And I think this team certainly has a chance to get right back into the playoffs if Cam Newton's committed and healthy. I agree. I mean, and I think he's hungry. He's focused. You can tell. He's working with the young players as well. I mean, he called up Nikhil Harry. He, he got in touch with Julian Edelman and, and um, Jacoby Myers. And you have to like what you see so far. Um, the, the, thing, the thing going forward is, though, is, and there's so much with the NFL right now, but the thing going forward is, is what's it, what's it going to be like if things aren't going well? Because we've seen this out of Cam Newton. He starts getting pouty. He starts snapping at the media. They're not going to tolerate that here. Listen, let's face it. No one's replacing Tom Brady, okay? Right. <laughs> but, you know, hey, why not? You take a year yeah. on the guy. Nobody even knows if this season's even going to be able to make it through. Why not? Take a, take a shot on him, see what happens. All right. We got uh, just over a minute. So, real quick, Jared and Mike, uh, we'll start off with Jared. Your thoughts on Cam Newton and this Patriots season. Uh, does it have potential to be a great season? I don't know about a great season. Um, you know, I guess is there potential? Sure, there's some potential, but I don't know if I would call it a great season. It's going to be kind of tough to replace things in a little bit of a transition period for this for this team. Um, you know, but I mean, obviously, you made the point. Cam Newton, when he's playing at a high level, is is a, an extremely good quarterback. Um, you know, he's obviously going to be the starting quarterback for this team, or he should be. And uh, you know, we'll kind of see what happens. But again, to Andy's point as well. What happens if things don't go, right. you know, don't go too well? Well, and, we'll certainly uh, have sure. to wait and see. I hate to interrupt you, uh, Mike. No. You got like 10 real, seconds. Real quick, it is going to be a great season because the season is going to be awful as it is, and I think he's just going to make it greater. Tom who? Okay. Tom. That's right. All right. <laughs> that, that's it for that's the Hangout Tom Hour. About. Andy and Jared, thanks so much for joining me. Thank we'll you. do this again for sure and talk some more sports. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 2 p.m. on the Hangout Hour. Have a great day, everybody.